Welcome to another Honkai Star Rail video on my channel. Right, first of all, I'm going to tell you straight up what this video isn't going to do. Now, this video isn't going to tell you to level up your accessories. And this video isn't going to tell you um, to wail on a five-star character or light cone, right? So this is not what this video is going to be about. Again, this video is not going to be telling you to level up your accessories or to wail on any five-star characters or light cones. I'm going to give you a no BS guide in this video on how you can improve your damage with the characters, light cones, and accessories you have right now. Now, without further ado, let's jump into this. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is enemy resistances. Understanding your enemy's strength and weaknesses and generally as you know in honkai star rail there are elements of characters for example imaginary and if you go with an imaginary character against a character who has imaginary weakness he will be doing more damage for example don hanging between when he goes into a match where there's in um weaknesses against his element obviously he will be doing more damage now in generally speaking um Generally speaking, all enemies in Honkai Star Rail have a base 20% resistance to all elements. That's generally, unless they have innate weaknesses or resistances. So if an enemy is weak to an element, for example, they will have 0% resistance to that element. If an enemy is resistant to an element, then they have 40% base resistance to that element. Generally, resistance cannot go below minus 100% or above 90%. This is like a general rule of thumb and a general formula which you should note. And that's everything there has to be said to understanding your enemy strengths and weaknesses. Basically, you got to always um, look out for where their strengths and weaknesses are. This will matter especially later on in the game when you come to MOC or Swarm Disaster or Simulated Universe. Now let's talk about the second one, which is the resource priority. Be more effective with what you have. And the problem I see quite often here is people split resources over many characters. And this is making your DPS output suffer quite a lot. For example, someone focuses on someone like Tinguin as a support type unit instead of focusing on their main DPS. And then you look at Tinguin's accessory set and Tinguin has the best accessories whatsoever and the main dps has below mediocre accessories and that is something you see quite often um in in uh, in in, uh, in the player base and this is also one of the main reasons why your damage sucks this is literally one of the main reasons why your damage sucks and also in generally um you have to be patient when when with regards to accessories right so what what you have to also note is a lot of people level mediocre accessories to the max and try to look for the most optimal accessory um instead of trying to look for the most optimal accessory and that's where you see quite often as well someone is i don't know at uh, trailblaze level 50 plus and has maxed out level um, accessories however these accessories are very mediocre have no good main stat or lack decent substats so you have someone like a main dps with maybe main stat um, attack plus or crit damage plus or crit rate plus however the substats are all i don't know um effect resistance or they are something like defense or hp and this isn't going to benefit um your main dps in the beginning right this is rather than that making your main dps hit a lot weaker than he actually could and generally you have to be patient with accessories um, and i'm talking specifically about accessories at this moment um you have to be very patient even whales have the problem with getting perfect stats for the accessories eventually you will get better accessories but generally speaking be mindful of your resources spend them or focus on your main dps first build one character at a time before you try and root out to different characters because if you do that you will 
end up being short of resources. Now, let's talk about a general rule in generally, um, no matter how tempting they are, relics are always your last priority. Don't focus on relics first. Relics are always your last priority. Your priorities are levels of a character at first, make your character, bring your character to the max level because that increases base stats. Then second is light cones, same thing as levels, that increases base stats. Then traces, traces are very important and at last, you push you push up your relics and that's basically a general rule of thumb how you want to be approaching um how you want to be approaching um resource spending and character building in general in honkai star Rail. and no matter how uh, how how tempting it may be to to farm relics relics are too unreliable to be prioritizing over free reliable stats like traces and light cones from the start Let's talk about number three, crit rate, crit damage ratio. Understanding the optimal crit rate and crit damage ratio. Now, generally recommended ratio of crit rate and crit damage in Honkai Star Rail is one to two, with crit damage being double of the crit rate. For example, if your crit rate is 60%, your crit rate or your crit damage should be at least 120%. In generally, you should try to aim for at least 50% crit rate when building characters. So everyone has a decent chance to deal, to deal crit um, critical hits, right? Now, there is a exception to this general rule. Let's just say it like that. There are characters, for example, like Dan Hang in Bibidolene, who will have a specific planner set, right? He will have a specific set of accessories. And for him, it is beneficial to have the crit rate at 70 plus percent. However, his crit damage doesn't need to be as high. Then again, there are characters like Jing Liu, for example, who will benefit from as low as 30% plus crit rate. So her a crit rate doesn't really need to be higher than 30%, but her crit damage needs to be very high. And those are like some exceptions, but that's a bit more specific to certain characters and how to build them and how to use it. But in generally, try to aim always for 50% crit rate and the double amount of crit damage. That's like a general rule of thumb in, in terms of understanding optimal crit rate and crit damage ratio. Right, let's talk about number four. Number four is stats over sets. Accessories main and substats are more important than set bonuses. Now, why am I saying this? Because first of all, there are people who have um, maybe the perfect optimal build in terms of what accessories a character should begin. However, the substats and main set of these of these accessories are wrong. And maybe they took the builds from some YouTube tutorial or another website, which is in some way totally fine. However, again, as I said, um, accessories are too unreliable to be prioritizing over free reliable stats. So in generally, when you have, for example, one accessory of one, um, of one set and another accessory of another set, Yes, I know there are set bonuses. So, for example, Dan Heng and Bibidulune. You give him his optimal um, Wastelander accessory set. You have the four piece and you have his two piece set uh, of the planner um, accessories, right? Now, the problem is when you, for example, have the wrong base and substats for these accessories, you will maybe not end up getting his crit rate over 70%. You will maybe end up at 40% and his speed maybe at 110 and so forth. So his stats are very low and they will not proc the two set bonus of the planner sphere and the planner um, rope set bonus, right? So that is the problem. And what do you do in that instance? Do you keep running this same set or do you choose an alternative? And what I'm telling you to do is choose sets or accessories in general where especially this this is very important especially um early on until you are reaching up until 50 uh trailblaze level 50 and plus and generally um you should be looking for 
um, accessories where your substats and your main stats are perfect and equip them even if you're equipping four pieces of different sets doesn't matter because it doesn't also make a difference if you have a four piece set of the specific set you need to be running for a specific character and you're not able to proc the set bonus because your stats don't meet the requirements for example uh, as i've just mentioned the example of don hanging bibliolone and that's why i'm saying stats and uh, sets the generally accessories main and subsets are more important than set bonuses. Don't blindly follow any guides, especially in the beginning. Focus on getting optimal stats first, since accessories should be your last priority, right? Now we have that out of the way. Let's talk about number five, which is my which is going to be my last point, and this is team building. Knowing what teams to take in different situations. A lot of times I see people with team builds without any benefit for each other. This will be very bad in MOC or Swarm. For example, you're running a team where there's no synergy between characters. They don't support each other. Um, there may be the right support unit for a specific team. However, it's wrong in that team, right? And you're not getting the most out of your characters um in in that way because especially later on again as i said moc swarm or um, simulated universe you will be suffering with bad team builds for example a lot of people use two healers in a team or not the right support unit in a team now two healers in a team may be good at some points however in other situations two healers in a team is way to overkill and you're suffering a lot of dps damage hence you may not be able to clear a quest in time um, to, to be able to um, uh, reach a goal. Or some run Dan Heng in Bibi de Lune, for example, but have no Tinguin or Bronya at least, and they run maybe the wrong um, support unit. Maybe they run a Yukong, which Yukong is in a sense okay, but not as good as if you have Tinguin or Bronya in the team, right? Or you run Jing Liu in MOC, for example, but you don't have a Bronya in the same team, which is going to be um, in, uh, which is going to be um, basically killing your chances of clearing even faster. And uh, that is basically some of the problems people are having with when, um, when, when, running, um, when running different team builds. Now, if you ever need assistance in building teams and you are not sure how to build a good team, you can always hit me up um, on Instagram or you can hit me up in the comment section. I do hope this video was beneficial. And if you liked the video and found it informative for you, then do consider leaving a like and a comment. And yeah, thanks for everyone for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time.